Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's uh, June, June 14th Educational Affairs Committee meeting. I will begin with roll call. We'll just go around the table and you can uh, roll call yourself, starting with Mr. Cohen. David Cohen, present. Jennifer Lemon, here. Liam Mulhern, present. Zachary Epps, present. Charles Bordeaux Williams, present. Joel Fishbein, present. Happy present. Happy <laughs> present. Thank you. <laughs> um, that was the roll call, and I will take a motion to approve the minutes from the May 17th, 2023 Educational Affairs Committee meeting. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Tonight's be one agenda this evening, and it is uh, a an update on our very, very new strategic plan. We approved the, the new strategic plan back in March of this year. So while we have only just begun, uh, we are here to learn a little bit about what has been happening in the last few months and what our next steps are going forward into the coming school year. And with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Smith. Good evening, everyone. Um, as stated, tonight's um, topic is around um, progress with the strategic plan. Um, just for full, uh, Transparency, the original topic for tonight was to be um, an update as to how we ended the school year. And that topic was established prior to the strategic plan um, being um, assembled. So the superintendent asked myself, as well as other members of the Office of Education to briefly pivot and to stick to our typical June um, topic, which is to cover the strategic plan. And so the thought is, is that even though the plan um, was only approved just in March, we do want to show the community and also to demonstrate to, to the board what we've already accomplished and to give a window into what we would like to see happen in the fall. As always, we start on our mission um, and vision statement. And um, by now, everyone should notice that this is um, different than what we started the year with. This was um, a part of our strategic planning process. Um, we did come out with a new mission and vision statement. And as always, we want to make sure that as we um, conduct our work here in the Sheltham School District for our families, that we always um, reference and go back to the mission and vision as they guide us. Just as a reminder, um, the strategic plan for 23 through 26, there were three um, initial phases. Phase one was to engage. That is where um, we brought in uh, the school board of directors and brought in other stakeholders to really get us started with this process um, and to get us restarted because we had a, a previous strategic plan that has since come to an end and this was an opportunity to think differently about how we would move forward. Phase two calls for us to create a framework and to give some direction to our work to move beyond our thoughts and our ideas to actually make them actionable. And phase three was the execution stage was to make sure that we specifically documented steps that were going to be taken in order to meet the goals and objectives of our strategic plan and also to hold um, ourselves accountable to what we said we wanted to do for our district and for our families. The graphic that is on um, the screen captures our seven strategic plan pillars. If you recall, our last strategic plan, we had five pathways. This strategic plan, um, we find ourselves with these five, these seven strategic plan pillars. I am not an engineer or an architect, but I think we all know that these pillars are, are, are holding up um, this particular structure. And so the seven pillars hold up the structure of where excellence begins with education. So we need all seven pillars in place for this structure to be um, sound and to be safe. And I don't want to read the smaller print at the bottom, but the smaller print at the bottom is kind of that foundation um, of the pillars before you get to that um, particular part. So our first pillar is the portrait of a graduate. And this pillar is, is not just something that we were charged to put in place by our superintendent, but it is also one of the expectations of the Pennsylvania Department of Education 
that we outline what our typical and expected graduate looks like when they leave Sheltonham. What do we want our kids um, to know? What do we want them to go out into the world and be able to do? And also to expand their options and horizons as they leave the Sheltonham School District. In terms of actions completed, culture and environment questionnaire distributed um, throughout the district. And also there um, are six competencies that have been a finalized for portion of a graduate. Next steps is to develop a district-wide communication, providing an overview so that whether or not you are at tonight's Ed Affairs meeting or whether you have an opportunity to watch the recording, that this is something that we spread district-wide to really make sure that everyone knows this is the expectation of a Sheltonham graduate. They will also develop a presentation and training plan that they are going to, to share at the August staff meeting, which I think is an excellent action step um, to consider so that we all start the school year on the same accord. So all of our schools will have an entree into what this portrait of a graduate looks like. I love the fact that it's all schools because we know, and especially those of us who've been in education for a while or been in this field for a while, who have our own children or grandchildren or, or nieces, nephews, what have you, we know that this idea of graduation and success does not start in ninth grade. It starts when they, they it really starts before they even start their formalized education. But this is what we have um, um, some flexibility with. So here in the district, I love the fact that this is going to happen in our K-4 buildings, as well as um, EP and also Cedar Brook, because we need to send a message not only to our staff, but we need our staff to send a message to our children that these thoughts start really early and these plans start early about what they want to do as they move forward. And last but not least, the age appropriate visual. Again, if we say we want this to be a K through 12 document, it needs to be kid friendly. It needs to be something that a kindergartner or first grader, our youngest citizens can explain um, what this means and what it is. And just as a, um, I guess a shout out, if you will, the co-chairs of this committee is Principal DeAndrea from Sheltonham High School and Principal Lytle from Myers Elementary School. Our second pillar and strategic goal is around teaching and learning. And as you can imagine, the teaching and learning pillar is all about curriculum design, instructional best practices, assessments that lead to improved instruction, and also looking at curriculum, curriculum and instruction in innovative ways. Um, the, the thought of art, artificial intelligence um, comes up very often. And so we wanna make sure that in this area, we're very innovative, we're new, we're fresh, and we keep ideas um, flowing so that students aren't just being poured into with information that they have time to experience their learning, they have some voice in their learning, they have some say in their learning. In order to do that, we need to make sure that our written documents and our curricular resources um, reflect that. And last but not least, we also want to make sure that we have a system of continuous school improvement, um, whether a school is 30% proficient or 98% proficient, until all students are at a level where they can go out into the world and be successful and productive, the continuous improvement is always um, going on. Actions completed. We have identified um, resources for outfacing curriculum documents. What that means is we have, we have identified a portal where teachers can go to um, this particular portal and pull up their curriculum documents. Um, back in the day, things were in a book, things were in a closet, in a binder. Now they're all going to be housed in a, um, a, 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 an electronic resource, if you will. In addition, in terms of those documents, we're also going to have an outward facing version of those documents. And what that means is if I'm the parent of a fourth grader and I'm thinking about what does my kid need to um, be able to do or know to be a successful fifth grader, those type of documents will be available to parents to see what their children are either working on, shall work on, or things that your child should have learned in their previous grade. Again, we're going to use data um, for continuous school improvement. Those actions have been completed with, with last year's, um, with this school year's implementation of those action plans. And again, the culture and environment questionnaire, you'll see that come up through all the pillars. 
because it was a comprehensive questionnaire that actually goes throughout um, different um, topic areas. The next step is to finalize K-8 ELA and math curriculum. The expectation is to roll that out for the new school year. Um, adoption of elementary school, uh, uh, social studies resources that took place last night. Thank you again to our school board of directors for approving our new resource. And last but not least, um, they are going to, this, this particular stream will analyze school improvement survey data. And our leaders for this particular pillar was our director of secondary education, Ms. Collins, and our director of STEM, Dr. Riley. Third pillar, social, emotional, and mental health. Um, even though the Sheltonham School District and other districts, we, we've been doing things around social, emotional health and mental wellness um, since forever, we are now being more intentional and being more transparent and calling it out how we're supporting students. And I think the, um, matter of fact, I know that our experiences during the pandemic made this um, something that, that all districts are looking at differently. We need to make sure that we have some very intentional things in place to support students either during a mental health crisis or something that is proactive before we get to that particular point so that we're not reactive. And in regards to this, we have um, finished um, a resource review. It's always important before you buy the next thing or engage with the next thing to really figure out what we already had. Um, so that has been done, MTSS training. MTSS stands for multi-tiered system of support. We are making sure all of our principals are properly trained. We are also rolling out our um, streamlined MTSS process for the fall. Tier two needs assessment has been completed. Tier two is the tier between one and two. So it's kind of students who are starting to show that they need additional support, but they're not at the, the final level um, where we need to take more severe action. There's also a review of Swiss data. The Swiss data is our um, school-wide information system data. They have also, um, on behalf of this particular um, pillar, applied for grants for additional mental health services. We are not taking for granted that, that everything um, needs to be done through our general budget. We are looking out for other ways to fund some of the things that the district um, needs. And again, you see that questionnaire come up um, a second, a third time. Next steps, additional MTSS training, and also um, an analysis of the PAYS um, data, which is the Pennsylvania Youth Survey, to determine um, needs of students as we move forward um, to see and to make sure that, that not only are we addressing needs based on what our own data tells us, but also data and, and information we've solicited directly from students. And the co-chairs for this committee is our um, Recently retired uh, director of student services, but current external um, consultant, Dr. Horsey, and our current director of student services, um, Ms. King. Our next strand, um, the, the acronym is DEBBIE, <laughs> Diversity, Equity, Belonging, and Inclusion. This um, strand is near and dear to all of us. We, we've heard um, from Mr. Kaufman, our communications director, um, in terms of branding, that diversity always comes up. Diversity is on our bumper stickers. Diversity tends to be the first thing that comes up um, when we mention Sheltonham. So it, it, it just makes sense that we would have a pillar that speaks directly to um, our work around diversity, equity, belonging, and inclusion. And the actions that have already been completed, we have an updated student belonging survey from the University of Penn that has been completed by our students at Sheltonham High School. And that particular survey gives students questions and prompts to give us a window into how they feel about either how they belong themselves or what they see from their classmates and their peers um, at the high school level. We've adopted um, new curriculum and complementary resources and materials. And, and the reason why that falls under the Debbie context is because our social studies selection, for example, um, some of the titles we did not select and some of the resources we did not select were not selected because of the representation of people of color and representation of historical events. Um, for example, one of the textbooks um, made it seem like, you know, um, after, uh, uh, 
the, the, the native land was colonized that some of our um, Native Americans kind of were like, okay, you know, let's go have a party. Good, good job. You know, we're over, let's go party. And there were some um, references to the women's movement that weren't, you know, culturally sensitive to the fact that women of color didn't get their due at the same time as the, the um, women's movement um, went forward. So we made sure that as we adopted new resources, that that was one of the things that was in the forefront to make sure that all people were um, accurately represented and historically represented properly. Um, so we've researched best practices for programming that we're going to consider for next year. We've hosted professional learning for students and staff, and, th and that's something that has been going on for quite some time, but we continue to keep um, updating that. And again, you see our questionnaire um, pop up again. Next steps um, around this is building administrators will review and revisit our current district um, policies around restorative practices and disciplinary practices. We've done this before. This time we're going to do it again, but also have this um, diversity, equity, belonging, and inclusion uh, model in the forefront of that review. We also have um, Dr. Peterson from the University of Pennsylvania. He has collected some data for us around advanced placement to see how we're doing with making sure that all students have um, access to advanced placement, that we're setting up students to not only have access, but to actually be successful once they get into those courses. And also we have um, plans to offer multi-stakeholder workshops and seminars um, to make sure that we bring parents along in this conversation, community members along in this conversation and continue our work with our teachers and our staff. And this particular thread is um, chaired by myself. Fifth pillar, climate and culture for student success. And this particular pillar is making sure that, um, that we have health relationships, that we have environments that are conducive to learning, conducive to teaching, and conducive to overall growth, conducive to innovation. And um, the actions that have been completed, again, the survey, which is kind of an all-encompassing survey that also addresses um, culture. They also have um, put together a student and family intake process protocol for climate and culture. And, and that is um, a protocol basically when new families come into the district that they are uh, made aware of quote unquote how we do things around here. This is what you do if you have a question about here. This is who you go to if these things happen. So really have an onboarding process so that we know what students and families, new students and families need before they need it. Next steps, a welcoming environment checklist that kind of, um, you know, just, just folds in nicely with the student intake process is that there's a checklist, there will be a checklist at every school that this is what we do for every new family. So every new family feels welcome, every new family feels like they know um, what they should know and they know who to go to if they don't know. Um, this is where we share our website, this is where we share our curriculum resources. This is where we make sure that they know who the PTO um, people are. This is where they know who their child's counselor is, so on and so forth. Um, the next, uh, next step for this particular um, pillar is to update a needs assessment survey to see what the needs are, either by building or by grade configuration, depending on what the data tells us. And the last bullet, which is my favorite, is some student leadership development um, to make sure and I can't speak for anybody else's children, but I know my children take messages from me totally different than they take it from their peers or from other adults. So this is allowing the, the, the kids to have some peer leadership, to lead one another, to set the tone, and to, um, you know, basically, you know, say this is what we want in our school. This is how we want things to go in our school. So the student leadership development for me is a very um, exciting prospect um, for the new school year. And the co-chairs for this particular um, pillar is Dr. Clark, our principal at Elkins Park, and Mr. Metcalf, our principal at Cedar Brook Middle School. All of our kids always listen to everything that we say. <laughs> <laughs> and our strategic, strategic goal number six, which is our sixth pillar, is all around communications and um, actions completed. As you can see, um, the launched, they've already launched the branding initiative. 
They have the um, Thought Exchange Survey. They've um, hosted two of the branding committee, um, two branding committee events to really, you know, um, start with, you know, when people see this, they think of Sheltonham. When people think of a Sheltonham grad or Sheltonham student or Sheltonham staff member, this is um, what they have in mind. They've also released a second survey um, to get even more input about the branding, um, the branding expectations um, for the district. Next steps are to host um, the second branding event, yes, June 15th, um, with various constituents to talk about brand and to launch a website update um, to make sure web websites are, are, are changing and and, and becoming even more um, user-friendly and so on and so forth. So we'll be updating hours to reflect um, updates in web design. Co-chairs for this committee, Mr. Kaufman, our Director of Communications, and also Ms. Rosenthal, also better known as Ricky. Last but not least, our strategic goal for number seven, infrastructure, facilities, and finance. And in all honesty, we, we asked Mr. Um, Schweiger to go light on us on this area because he had pages and pages of things um, to offer because he's, you know, has gotten a lot done um, since he's been here as our new business manager. So he did go light and give us just a few, as Dr. Scriven would say, high level things that have been completed in next steps. Um, in terms of actions completed, there has been a professional team selected for a feasibility study, which is in progress process. Um, modifications and additions to our district software. Again, you know, we have to keep up with um, the latest and the greatest because it moves faster, it's more sleek, and it gives us data um, in, in uh, a shorter period of time. So um, he lists a few of the things that, that he has put in place. And also there's a business performance review and process um, as well. Next steps, continue to work with architects and engineers to develop a long-term capital plan to really look at what we want for the school district along the line. And I'll be honest, when he says long-term plan, I heard something like 2046. So it's, it's way out there, but it's, it's very visionary and it's really beginning with the end in mind. Also using software add-ons to modify um, procedures and staff um, use on different um, softwares, also implement recommendations of the business performance review, which makes perfect sense after the review is done to actually take the information, not put it on someone's shelf, not just look at it, but to actually start to put some of the things, some of those things in place, and also to monitor process, proper usage after training um, has taken place. And this particular committee is chaired by Mr. Holman, and also Mr. Swiger, Mr. Holman, our Director of Facilities, and Mr. Swiger, our um, Business Manager. And last but not least, um, we've outlined all seven pillars, what's expected, um, but one of the key things is accountability. How are we going to make sure that these things happen? How are we going to make sure that the pillars and the chairs and the groups do what they're supposed to do? Um, we will have um, status presentations. There will be um, four. For next year, two by way of presentation, two by way of written report. We will also um, continue to give the board relevant updates as things change, as things um, are completed, as things go on. We'll make sure we um, update the board through um, our board updates and we'll update the community as needed through our website, social media, and other um, channels. We will also um, post our spilt team meeting, strategic planning, internal leadership team, and Dr. Scriven um, will be um, an integral part of those meetings to make sure that we're moving forward with the work. Um, myself, I will oversee the spilt meetings. I will monitor the um, pillars, the chair people in the pillars, and also coordinate some cross um, pillar meetings where things, um, because some of these, we can't do all seven pillars in isolation all the time. There will be some team meetings. So that will be my responsibility and we will also um, meet two hours weekly in year one to track action steps and um, progress. And um, when those meetings take place, we will be following up with Dr. Scriven to let him know where we are in that process. And he in turn will update um, the school board of directors. And again, updates will be shared with the community and with the board through two written um, updates as well as two actual presentations. 
And with that, we will field any questions um, that anyone may have. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Thank Robert. You. Uh, I was expecting, I actually wasn't an integral part of the development of the strategic plan. I wasn't the board members who got involved, but I was surprised to see the, the seventh one, the facilities finance, didn't include sustainability and uh, environmental awareness stuff in there. And I, I know that has been a board priority since the day I stepped on eight years ago. And it's something we've talked about a lot, but done very little about. And I'd like to um, you know, just put that out there because Dr. Spirit mentioned this is a living document. So if it can live and expand as we include that really important board and community priority, it would be better in my view. It's not a problem, Lily. No, that is on our radar. Um, something that can easily be captured uh, under one of the next steps. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. With the feasibility study for facilities, I know that a lot of work was scheduled to occur over summer. This is our last meeting, so I'm curious at a high level what the plan is for work over the summer, especially engagement board and also the community, and or if that's going to be referred to the fall. Well, really, when we talk about work, we're really in the, desi the design phase right now. There's no um, actual work other than addressing some of the high level issues that we have with that build. So there's things that we have to do just from a safety standpoint. Um, but we're really looking at designs and with those designs, quotes being attached. So we kind of know um, how we can prioritize and what the potential costs are, are going to be uh, in order for us to move forward. Um, design could take up to a year, and that's what we were really pushing for the board to approve, just so that now we can start putting potential options on paper. So that's what's going to be happening over the summer. Okay. So at, at some point, will there be engagement with the board and the community? Without a doubt. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, more of a comment. Uh, appreciate the update. Uh, really soon after the adoption and creation of the strategic plan, we have an update where pretty much across every pillar, there's something underway. Uh, and I'm encouraged because there's clear action steps. There's transparency about what's happening, where we need to go. And most importantly, I really appreciated that last slide around accountability and how every, it shows how we're all, all of the clear roles, the clear roles for all of us to play uh, at every level. Um, and it's really timely. Just last night, we voted on uh, the final budget. And so what we hear, and this, this isn't the first time we've continually heard like what we're investing in are the most important pieces of the strategic plan. MTSS, every time we hear about that, I feel like it's like we're on track, making refinements. We heard about it at the school improvement plans. And so it's definitely encouraged to hear as next year what's going to be happening with that. The culture of accountability and common assessments uh, and, and continuous improvement. Uh, just Again, just last night, the, I, I broke down bringing the best practices out of silos. So I feel like, you know, that is really the that's that's the that's the synergy that I'm hearing. That's the vision that I see, and that the action steps align with that. And we're investing in it as well. So that's that that really gives me a lot of uh, encouragement that we'll see this through with fidelity, and there'll be things, there'll be measurable gains in different ways that we can that we can see. So I'll pause there. Yeah. So if I could just comment to that real quick, and, I, and I'm not going to quantify because I'm very careful in board meetings. Um, not to publicly compare us to other districts, but this this is one thing I will say. We are um, in the minority in terms of districts that actually have a, a very detailed strategic plan outside of the comprehensive plan, which is the three-year plan that most districts do. So I think our intentionality around being more explicit around the work um, 
is, is a good direction. And, and uh, I'm excited about the work that the team has done. Um, yes, this is high level. Early, you see, we'll be reporting out four times. Once we get data back, that's when it, we'll really go deeper um, into the student outcomes, et cetera. This is going to be a continuous process. So we're going to be very fluid uh, in our communication around progress um, towards meeting the targets. So thank you for your comments. Any other board comments or questions? I have one more. Sorry. Uh, I think that there's something that, that we're talking about this new social studies curriculum, and I'm thrilled to hear that it has a diversity lens, and that's awesome. And I think in the current in the environment we're in now, where a district ten miles away is banning books, and we're developing curricula that are more, not less, inclusive. That goes to our branding mm -hmm. exercise. That is not only are we diverse because we have a lot of different cues and religions, but we're also promoting diversity because we're rejecting what is going on elsewhere. We're working in the opposite direction because that's how important it is to us. That that is just profound and, and needs to be part of our message, I think. Well, we have two members yeah. right here that'll be yeah. with me in this and room has, again tomorrow. I'm going to be here too, by the way. Risen you will. Yeah. 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 That has risen to the surface. That Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. our converse, we like kind of a blue sky kind of conversation in our first meeting a few weeks ago. And that I mean, book banning and those ideas yeah. came up in our yeah. in fact, writing on post it yeah. notes kind of conversations and talking about how that's. Kind of the antithesis. Yeah. yeah, I actually said that we're the district that doesn't ban books. We approve books. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. so that's absolutely yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And and Kevin's uh, read ban books social media thing was awesome. So I just, that is part of who we are, but it should be part of our strategic vision. Any other comments or questions? I just have a few quick comments. Uh, just put it to some of the uh, the action items that I see happening or about to happen that um, are exciting. I think uh, loving that age appropriate document that all you know even our youngest learners can look at and and you know and then see themselves you know progressing. Um, facing access to curriculum is something I know parents and family members have been asking for for a long time. So I'm excited to. Not that that's an easy task and that we'll be ready right away, but that we're working towards that concretely is awesome. Um, I think, and again, Dr. Smith, to echo what you said, excited about that student leadership development. I think that, you know, uh, they often know better than us and we need to trust them and, and give them the tools that they need uh, to be successful in those ways. I had one very quick question about the intake process under climate and culture for new families. So that sounds like what's being designed is mostly around new families that are coming in mid-year or at a non-kindergarten point, maybe. Or will that be offered to our incoming kindergarten families as well? That will be offered to okay. the incoming kindergarten okay. families as well. Okay. I just know in the past, those types of programs seem to be designed more for those coming in at a different point. So I'm glad to see it's yeah. for everyone. Awesome. Thank you. That you just reminded me of something. Uh, I'm wondering, Dr. Scriven, if, um, and this is just a thought putting out there, if there's a way to connect, when we talk about student leaders, our new student representatives and the liaison, to the strategic work, some of the work that's being done around the strategic plan. Um, not only to get their input, but just so they're just not coming to like a board meeting and saying like, here's activities that we're doing, but that there's uh, some type of connection for them. Yeah, here. That, that'll be part of my first meeting okay. um, where I'll be doing more boarding right. in terms of sharing the vision and the mm -hmm. direction that we're looking at. They brought a lot of positive energy last night. They really and did. I'm, yeah, really I'm, excited. I'm excited. I'm excited mm -hmm. about having my first meeting. Cool. Yeah. Any comments, any other comments from the board? Any comments from the public? I don't know if there's anyone on the call that has a question or a comment. Nothing in QA, no raised hands. <laughs> Some kind of record <laughs> meeting here. <laughs> You're not, no one's a, this is what happens in June, girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, if there are no further questions or comments, uh, thank you, Dr. Smith and your team. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. 
and helping us close out uh, this final Ed Affairs meeting for the 2022-23 school year. We appreciate you, and we know that you will all be working very hard this summer uh, <laughs> to get us where we need to be to open in August. Um, so, and thank you. I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.